The Mercedes V-Class is one of the most luxurious people mover you will find in the market. Some people buy it for business use, some others buy it for private purpose, and you find it as a camper van called Marco Polo as well. Now Mercedes goes the next step and does electrify that car, and the name is EQV. What that car delivers regarding to range, regarding to rechargement, regarding to luxurious drive and comfort, let's find out now. The EQV features 150 kilowatt or 204 PS strong electric engine on board and that delivers 362 newton meters of maximum torque. And this power goes to the front axle and so the car features a maximum speed of 140 kilometers where it's electronically stopped or if you want you can have 160 as an optional feature. And in Germany that's very important because here this is the figure you need to have to calculate your insurance pricing. Looking at the front of the EQV, you instantly see, yes, it looks like a V-Class, but there is a difference. And the difference is that grill, because that's the so-called black panel grill you may already know from other EQ models. Important to know with the car is it comes as standard with alloy headlamps, but our car is featuring the so-called intelligent LED light system, which is an optional extra. If you are interested in an EQV, you have at least here in Germany um, a price of 17,000 euro you should expect. That's for the normal version. If you want the extra long version, that'll cost you about 1,000 euros more. Um, but then, of course, you can put loads and loads of extras into the car, which makes the car a lot more expensive. So I think prices far above are not um, hard to reach. Uh, but to give you an idea of what the car always brings um, if you buy the standard version, um, here is the list with the most important features. Um, just to give you an idea of how the car comes if you don't buy any extras, but I think you will find some bits and pieces where you say, mm, I would prefer to have this or this as well. The Mercedes EQV can be ordered from around 69,000 euros in two different lengths. The so-called long version is 5 meters 14, while the extra long version measures 5 meters 37 and costs around 1,000 euro more. The maximum weight allowed for both vans is 3,500 kilograms. The EQV is, regarding to the craftsmanship and materials, a real Mercedes. So you do find very nice surfaces, you find leather, you find soft touch, you find here in dashboard something that looks a bit like carbon fiber with very very nice, very thin lines, so modern, fresh, but still typical Mercedes. And um, even the colors the car features are very nice, they match perfectly together. So this really provides you with an environment where you can feel really cozy and very comfortable. Looking at the side of our test car, you do find 18-inch alloys, but important to know, 17-inch is the standard you get. The EQV is available in two different lengths. The short one is 5 meter 14, the longer one is 5 meter 37, and the wheelbase of the short one is 320, the bigger one uh, provides you with about 20 centimeters more. Looking at the shape of the car and the design, it absolutely looks like a standard V-Class, but there are two things where you can see it is not. One is, of course, this badge here, which calls, yes, this is an EQV. And the other thing is, behind that, where normally the tank is, you do not find nothing. There is an extra one here at the front bumper where you start recharging your EQV. Mercedes says that the EQV should take uh, 26.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer driven. During our test drive, where we did motorway and some countryside driving, uh, we used about 23. And I think that's a very positive news. There are currently no real competitor for the EQV. The Upt E Caravelle is basically a Volkswagen T6 bus, but only offers a range of around 130 kilometers from a 37.3 kilowatt hour battery. The Safira E-Life and Peugeot E-Traveller will be available from 2021 at prices below 60,000 euros. With a range of up to 330 km and a top speed of 130 km power, they are almost equal with the EQV. Nevertheless, the real competitor is the planned ID bus from Volkswagen. However, this will be probably available not before 2022. Neither the V-Class or the new EQV offers a very big variety of uh, driver assistance and safety systems, but the car comes as standard, quite nicely equipped. You do find the list here with the most important features. And on top of this, you do find the list as well. Um, you can order some extras if you want, but don't expect a very long list because that car does not feature as many um, driver assistance and safety options as, for instance, the new E-Class does. 
The rear of the car is a perfect example for the boxy design of the EQV because the car is 1 meter 93 in width without the rear view mirrors and it's 1 meter 91 in height without the roof rails. If you put them on top, it's 1 meter 96, but you still can go with that car without thinking about any scratches on top into every underground parking slot. Um, the only difference regarding to the look at the rear is this EQV signature here at the boot lid, uh, but the rest is completely the same as with the standard V-Class. And what I do like with the EQV as well as with the V-Class is the split it uh, tail lid here, because I can easily access everything without opening the big one. One thing I really do like with the standard equipment of the EQV is that you will always have MBUX on board and you will always have this 10.25 inch screen as a touchscreen here uh, in your car. And the good thing with that one is that is the one you're going to configure and control your system with. And that is not only a very nice infotainment, it's also a very nice sat nav and an intelligent one as well because that is primarily made for electric driving. And so the car can completely um, calculate your route including the charging points and the good thing is because of life data it will instantly recognize if the charging station is broken or maybe in use and so it will recalculate your route and it will find the next possible charging place as well. What I really do like is the so-called Distronic which is nothing different than an adaptive cruise control and I really do like that because it works so smooth and so soft um, and what I would love to see is that the car on top features an active um, lane assist, which is not what Mercedes delivers, like when you, leave, when you leave the lane without using the indicator that you have vibrations in the steering wheel. What I mean is uh, uh, one that really keeps the car in the middle of the road. And this is something you can't order for the new EQV. So now we close this very practical window and we're going to open the big one just to see how much boot capacity that car really offers. And I can tell you with the seats in the car, our car offers up to 1,030 liters of boot capacity. If you get rid of all that stuff, you get a load area of up to 4,630 liters. Important to notice the extra long version of the car then offers about 400 liters more in both situations. The EQV features four different drive programs. It's E+, E, C and S. And E and E+, plus is for efficient, C is for comfort and S of course is for sport. And depending on what uh, drive mode you choose, the car features a little less comfort, like less heating power with the, with the E Plus for instance, or it features more power or maximum power like with a sports version. Um, but on top of this, the car also gives you the opportunity to choose between five different recuperation modes. And you can have on one hand zero recuperation like sailing, up to one pedal drive with maximum recuperation. Um, but what I really do like a lot is there is a so-called auto mode and that one then um, is calculating the best recuperation depending on the situation you're in and for this it not only uses the radar and the camera system it also uses the sat nav and with that it really calculates the best recuperation for the actual situation to make your car as efficient as possible. Of course, an EQV must be as practical as a V-Class and therefore you do find loads and loads of compartments to put stuff in. And so you do have two um, different compartments in the door, a little bit more up, which is smaller, and then the big one down there where you can put bottles and all that stuff as well. On top of this, you do find a big compartment here in the center console, which you can close. And the front part is quite a big compartment and there is the wireless charging uh, mounted as well. And behind that, you do find two cup holders and both you can cover. How about the, um, the compartments on the rear seat? That depends on what kind of seat configuration you choose, but of course there are more than enough for your day-to-day -day driving with your passengers. For the EQV, you can order different seat setups like with a V-Class, and so the car offers as a maximum space for up to eight passengers. But you can have four single seats like we do, you can have two benches, or you can have two very comfortable seats here at the rear to have the car as a chauffeur limousine. The weight of the EQV empty is about 2,750 kilograms and the maximum weight of the car is three and a half tons. That's a lot, but to be honest, while driving through the countryside, you do not really feel the weight of the, the, weight of the car uh, except when you're braking. And the reason for that is we, of course, have a very uh, uh, heavy battery on board, but this battery is very low into the car and that gives the car a very low point of gravity. And so the drive is, yes, very solid and a lot more solid than I expected. Driving onto the motorway, you instantly feel how powerful this powertrain is. And the car really reacts instantly when you push the pedal. 
and that really yeah provides you with a very nice feeling while driving with a van fully electric on a motorway. The EQV comes with a 100 kilowatt hour battery on board, but we can only use 90 kilowatt hours for driving. But that then offers us a maximum range of 356 kilometers regarding to the new measurement system called WLTP. Um, when we talk about the O1, it's then I think 418. But nevertheless, what I really do like is that the socket is here at the front bumper. That really gives you the opportunity to easy charge that big car in front of a quick charger. When we talk about quick charger, that car offers you 11 kilowatt maximum loading power or charging power on a wall box but I think more important you can recharge this big battery at a DC quick charger from 10 to 80 percent in only 45 minutes. And now we're driving with a speed of about 120 kilometers per hour on the motorway and what you hear is it's quite quiet in the car. When we talk about the V-Class that car is already very nicely insulated and very quiet but this car is even better. So now we are a bit, we are a bit quicker on the motorway and um, our uh, average consumption jumped up to 24 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer driven. But on the other hand, we drove more than 125 kilometers already and the car still provides me with a um, range of more than 200, which means you can really expe expect a, a realistic range of more than 350 kilometers while you're normally daily driving. That was my first test drive in the new Mercedes EQV. And what I really like with that car, it is as flexible and as comfortable as the standard V-Class, but even more quiet because of the electric powertrain. On top, you do find typical Mercedes materials and craftsmanship, and of course, all the driver assistance and safety systems you used to by buying such a van of Mercedes. And then when we talk about the drive of the car, we have to talk about the consumption of the car and this is a very important figure. During our test drive we always used less than what the figures of a data sheet of the car told us and with that the um, range of more than 400 kilometers is really something you may reach even under worse conditions than we have had today. Um, one thing I don't like with the car and this is something I don't like with so many Mercedes is the entrance price because with that car here in Germany you have to pay a little less than 70,000 euros for the base model but on the other hand, this is very similar to what the V-Class is going to cost you, but with that car, you drive completely emission-free. 